presence. How do you experience it in a community? In this episode of A Walk in the Park, we head to the woods right by Clooney Hill with Grace and her friend Maddie, who just finished up her experience week here at the Findhorn Foundation to discuss exactly that. So Grace, how did you how did you end up here at Fintorn? You have an interesting story because you're American, but you're not really American. Yeah. So let's so let's you where where were you born? Let's start right off with that. So I was born in London, and I moved to Los Angeles when I was 11, which was um, a surprising culture shock. Um, I think. In retrospect, I felt, you know, I feel like they're two quite polar cultures. And I had a really strong urge to come back to the UK. So through a friend of my dad's, Dorota, I heard about Findhorn. And um, there were a few quite strange synchronicities leading up to this. Like I had uh, built this sort of vision board. I'd heard about Findhorn, hadn't really looked at the website wasn't keen or completely sure that it was for me. Um, But I had all these sort of um, pictures in my mind about, uh, you know, these buildings with greenhouses and um, lily pads and sort of lush moss. And so I just kind of made a little vision board to expunge it from my mind. I just wanted to get it out. And... um, Then when Dorota, who's been here for a really long time, sent me the website link, it was like spitting image. It was the same, the same image, the Mm -hmm. same aesthetic. So I was like, okay, well, this is definitely an indicator that I should, should go. And she recommended Experience Week for anybody who, you know, wants a a good, all-encompassing introduction Mm -hmm. to the community. Um... And I remember meeting you during your sacred dance yeah. uh, day yeah. on Experience Week. Mm-hmm. And then you decided to stay since then. That was last fall, right? That was, yeah, it was September. Yeah, so it's been a few months. It's April now. And then I'm assuming you spoke to your friends about your experience, one of which included Madeline. Yeah, mm-hmm. she was getting the live stream <laughs> from email where we were sending you photos. Mm-hmm. So what did what did you think, Maddie, when you were hearing about this place called Findhorn from your friend Grace? I, you know, the first time I actually had sort of reunited with Grace mm-hmm. after I'd been away in school for, for four years. We hadn't seen each other much. But, um, strangely enough, as I was returning to Los Angeles, she was actually departing. And we sort of had this dinner and she was giving me some um, some information about where she's going and why she's going there and what it's like. And I knew right off the bat I was going to visit, mostly for an excuse to go to Scotland and to, mm-hmm. and to see you. I had no idea what to expect uh, when I came to this place. Um, Did you have any kind of... Preconceived? Yeah, I, any kind of vision? You like know... Grace mentioned. I, um, I did, I did. In some ways I did. I actually really wanted to come here for the ecological aspects of it. I'm really interested in uh, natural resource defense and that's sort of the path I'm going to veer towards, I think, once I leave this place. But um, I, w- I was struggling a lot when I moved back, actually. And that's a big reason why I came came over here. Grace. When you moved back to... To, to Los Angeles, okay. yeah. Where were you living before that? Oregon, which okay. has many overlapping aspects with, uh, with Finhorn, such as the forest... Um, sort of the way of being, the way of living, like the people have here. But um, yeah, I knew I was going to visit and mm. I kind of had, I had no idea what I was in for. Okay, great. So then you came for Experience Week, which was last week. So you just mm-hmm. finished your Experience Week and mm-hmm. so you're fresh mm-hmm. off of your week. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling? I, to be totally honest, I have a lot to process. I, it was such a ride and... Um, as Grace had informed me prior to coming, which I was planning on doing back in February. And it kept getting pushed back for one reason or another. And I think the perfect word to describe my reason for coming now is serendipity. It mm. ended up being the ideal time. But um, So what were the ideals? Was it the ideal 
season, the ideal people the ideal, that you met? Or? Both, both. Okay. Met both metaphorically and literally. It happened to be spring. I was going to come in the winter. So everything's blooming right now. There's these bumblebees all over the place. Yeah. Um, so truly spectacular, the setting here. And then also my group was really, really incredible. We all connected and bonded. I sort of had anticipated there might be like little pockets of people that related more closely to one another. But we all had a very special connection, which I think made it even more transformative having mm. the um the vulnerability and that shared sense of comfort and support with one another to the point that we could share some really intimate things um whew. yeah i don't even know where to begin it was um it was an experience i wish that everyone could have and that's one thing that i think i'm a little on edge about is uh i'm going to be traveling back to london after this mm-hmm. and then make my way back to la and I'm sort of keeping in mind the fact that I'm fresh out of this experience and that I'm going to be around many people that have not experienced experience week. Yeah. <laughs> so it seems like you had a positive experience. Mm-hmm. Well, well, how did it how did it affect you if you could sort of so, talk about that? Uh, it's funny because I came in in, a, in sort of a darker headspace. Like I sort of mentioned, I was struggling a lot before I, I came here. And the big thing that um, Grace helped me with, I actually... Originally, I was going to cancel my, my trip, so I was worried I wasn't in the right headspace to be traveling alone. I was scared, um, and then Grace reassured me that it was more helpful than any sort of book mm. or therapy being mm. here and not experience week. And so, sure enough, I went for it, um, and at first, some of it was a little over my head in terms of um, the unseen beings and realms and... Uh, the sense of community, the the conversation, the way people look at you in your eyes and take you in the light and the love. It's all so, it was so foreign to me living in Los Angeles and sort of being used to my family dynamics, you know? Yeah, I think you um, had mentioned to me how how you, you really appreciate how present yeah. you felt people here are. Yeah, so for me, coming from Los Angeles and someone who can be a little more cynical about things... Um, I'll say it really does feel like people are just these spirits walking around. They're not even people, you know. It's like (laughs) the way people look at you with this gaze, this like intense gaze where they really see into your eyes and they take you in. And yet at the same time, the lightheartedness and the playfulness, all of the board games and the laughter, there's always sort of, there always seems to be laughter around, Mm. you know. Yeah. But people are very present and conscious and it feels like, in one week, on one hand, time went by so fast, and yet it feels like it had been months that I'd been staying here. So, been, yeah. yeah, that's really interesting, because I, I do feel like pe- that people in the Finthorn Foundation are very present, mm-hmm. that's for sure. And then yeah. I, I guess my question for you, Grace, is how have you guys had any time to sort of compare and contrast your experience week experiences? Mm. I, how, I mean, do you... Do you relate to anything that Maddie's saying here, or how does that compare to the experience that you had? Um, I suppose uh, I feel like, for me, there was a part of me that knew, before I even got here, what it was going to be. There was a part of me that knew I was going to end up staying on. Almost like there was this resonance, even in hearing about it, that was almost of comfort to me. Like, I felt immediately a sense of, of belonging. And I think because I am have been kind of on a... Um, there's been a lot of synchronicity in my life in the past three years. When I got here, I think I was able to... It wasn't overwhelming. Like, it felt very, mm-hmm. it felt very mm-hmm. natural. It came, it came very natural, naturally to me. Um... So, yeah, I don't know if we've had time to really compare mm-hmm. and contrast. But I do, I absolutely relate to the feeling. And this is what I told Maddie before she came. Like, you are going to fall in love with a group of people. <laughs> be, be prepared. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I will say, like, when I first came here, like, I'm from Los Angeles. It's a very superficial culture. Yeah. I think there'll always be, like, a tiny 15-year-old girl in me who's mm-hmm. like, what is she wearing? <laughs> what is she doing? What is she talking about? Uh-huh. Fairies what? Um, you know, we're doing all this sort of dance and games yeah. and behaving like children. And like the first <laughs> couple of days I was laughing about it. I was mm. like, this is completely ridiculous. 
And then I realized I love this. Mm -hmm. I love this. Mm -hmm. And I've done two, two programs here. And, um, I mean, the second one was complete, just exponentially, just completely Mm life-changing. And it really felt like I was aligning with my purpose. But Experience Week was the first time I was put in this very well-held container with strangers from all over the world. And I felt Mm -hmm. a feeling of love Mm -hmm. by the end of it. I felt a feeling like we had formed this constellation of souls and we had all become this sort of mechanism, this machine within a week with our different quirks and our different culture um, and managed to support and hold one another. And it, it, re- it made me realize that in my life, the root of a lot of my problems is the lack of feeling like I belong mm. um, and a lack of community. And although for me, the spiritual stuff was already, I was already building a foundation and it was really good to be in an environment that um, supported that rather than took away from that. Because mm-hmm. I think it's difficult to be a spiritual person in a city like Los Angeles mm-hmm. where there's so much hustle and, and movement. I think it was really comforting to be in an environment that encourages spiritual practice. Mm-hmm. But for me, it was more the sense of, of belonging and, and being, you know, so close to these individuals. Mm-hmm. And really, it was like all this stuff moved away from my heart space and mm-hmm. I was able to facilitate other individuals, a group of other individuals. Um, and it wasn't dependent on one person. It wasn't de- it was dependent on, the, you know, this... Mm-hmm this sense of community, this sense of belonging. And um, for me, that was the strongest aspect. Mm, Yeah. So you're staying here after Mm -hmm. this, but Maddie, you're going back to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And then I just sort of want to talk about Grace's point where you just talked about um, it's difficult to maintain a spiritual practice or be a spiritual person in a place like Los Angeles. So how do you feel, Maddie, you're going to take... Findhorn back mm-hmm. to Los Angeles with you. Do you are you afraid of um, being thrown back into the lion's den, or, or how, <laughs> what, what are you, how are you feeling about going back? I'm, I'm um, on one hand, I feel definitely a little nervous. You know, it's going to be a big shock, and then um, going into a place that's sort of the hub of narcissism and, and frenetic <laughs> energy. You know, people go there to be famous and to pursue. You know gaining their wealth whereas here people come here for that uh, the sense of community and the space to nurture the spirituality and the wellness on different levels of course I'm a little nervous but at the same time I'm really excited because I know I'm going to bring this place back with me and I'm going to spread it as well Mm. even just starting with my own family having those um a big thing that I loved here is having those meals where Mm -hmm. three times a day you sit down and you share this food that you bless first And you eat together. It's a time to laugh together, to connect, to reflect. Um, So that being said, that's just one very simple thing. Um, The attunements we did is a a thing. I was was actually thinking a lot about this yesterday, Mm. how I'm going to bring it in with me. Because back home, and I think in a lot of places, you ask people, how are you? You know, how are you doing? And everyone says, I'm good. How are you? And if you, uh, yeah. It's a standard American Mm -hmm. script, isn't Mm -hmm. it? Yeah. And so I think having the... Having the courage and the trust to speak really honestly and openly about what's going on is a big takeaway that may seem a little simple, but has had such a profound effect on me being here. And so sort of taking that back to L.A. with me, um, aside from just the the honesty of of, uh, your states of being, having this practice of attunement. So instead of going around from errands to errands to errands to social interaction, um, the days just sort of slip through your fingers. And so having this time to really reflect on what you've done and what you're going to do and really, really tune in, being present. That has really helped mm. facilitate um, my, my being present. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess just bringing with me that, that presence to other people mm. that I felt here that has affected me so mm. much, the way people really look at you and take you in and, and hold you. Mm. Like Grace mentions, that feeling of being held and holding, yeah. knowing that whatever it is, there is some divine energy around me, the magic that's, mm. that I'm going to try and spread around to the L.A. folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess L.A. has something to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. And it's, so it seems like presence is a 
has been a big mm -hmm. takeaway for you. It's been mm -hmm. a big theme. You notice that from the people that you met here. You, it's something that you want to cultivate within you more, mm -hmm. and it's something that you want to bring back to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The presence and the timeliness as well, actually, mm. I have to add. I sort of assumed coming into this place that there would be this sort of relaxed, hippy-dippy <laughs> vibe. I had this preconceived notion. I had a little bit of ideas of what I thought it might be. But um, there's a big emphasis on the time here, how you spend your time, you know, what interaction. Mm -hmm. And everything you do, it's like, is this nurturing my soul? Is this helping me? There's not mindless chatter, I've found, since mm. I've been here. There's no sort of vapid conversation. And that being said, it's not always very intense, you know. It, mm. There's the playful, there's the lightness of it. But mm -hmm. the punctuality and the structure where you really do choose use your time wisely. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Back as well. Yeah. All right, well, mm. thank you both for joining me in this beautiful forest. Mm. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed the interview. Mm. And until next time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>